Welcome, my name is Harald Sack. My name is Tabea Tietz. And this is Knowledge Graphs, lecture number three, querying knowledge graphs with Sparkle. And today we're going to show you complex queries with Sparkle. Just remember from the last section of the lecture, we were querying DBpedia and we were doing a filter constraint query. Just for repetition, what did we do? We were looking for authors here and their books and we want to filter results for English labels and dystopian novels and limit the results to the first 100. So you see what we introduced here was the filter constraint. And we said here when we selected here the author name that the language of the author name should be English. And here you see for the title, so we selected the title here of the work and the language of the title also should be English. And of course, the last constraint here is that work should be or should have the subject dystopian novel. So this all comes from DBpedia. We don't have to repeat this query again, but today we want to show you another knowledge base, Wikidata, and it's Tabea's turn. Yes, so let's take a look at how we can filter for language in Wikidata. And for this, we also have a query prepared for you. And here we want to search for authors and their books, including a publication date. We want to filter the results for English labels. And um, we want to query dystopian novels and limit the results to the first 100. So let's take a look at the query. As we all know, for Wikidata, we just have these IDs here and therefore for your convenience we commented on what they actually mean. So let's take a look. We have the variable book here. That means we are always re referring to the very same book. We have the book is instance of literary work and we have some author, a genre and a publication date. And then we want to say that this book uh, label should be in English language. And this we can do with the Wikidata label service, which is very convenient. So here we use the service keyword and then we issue the Wikidata specific label service. It's very convenient because it also reduces the um, yeah, query complexity for us. And yes, and here we have also said that we want to filter the results for English labels and in this case, we don't have to use the specific filter keyword because we have the service here. And let's take a look at the query. In Wikidata, it's the very same one. We want the author label and the book label and everything should be in English. And let's take a look. Yes, we have, for example, Stephen King, The Running Man, and all of our results are in English. We also have a publication date. So it did exactly what we wanted it to do. Now to create more complex queries, we can use the so-called Sparkle operators. First of all, we could, for example, connect filter constraints by a logical AND or a logical OR. So these are here the double ampersand or the double vertical lines, which means both conditions have to hold or one of the conditions I mentioned have to hold. Otherwise, we have comparison operators, so if one is exactly the same like the other. We have an equal sign. If one should not be the same, then we have a not equal sign. And of course, we can compare also here values, so numeric data types with greater than, smaller than, and so on, so on. And of course, this holds for numeric data types, for date time, for strings, as well as for booleans. Um, for any kind of data types, of course, the equal and the not equal holds. That's clear. And arithmetic operators, so if you want to do a sum, if you want to do a multiplication, a division and stuff like that, this of course only works for numeric data types. So we will see the use of these operators then in further examples. In addition, there are a few more operators that we can use. One if is the so-called regular expression feature of Sparkle, so we will explain it right after that. Or you can simply ask if a specific term defined by A is exactly the same like the term given in B or whether two languages of two expression, they match. And this is lang matches, for example. Okay. Right, as Harald already said, we have the possibility to use regex also within Sparkle. Let's see what that can look like. Um, in our query, we want to search for 
book titles that end with the word Mars and they should be sorted by publication date. And um, as we've seen before, we start with a book variable and then we have some kind of instance of written work. We have a publication date with a variable date here. We have an author with an author variable, as we have already seen. And then we have the label and the variable book label. And now we want to filter these book labels for the word Mars and it should end with Mars. Let's see what that looks like in the query. So as we have done before, we have here the variable for book and all of the other information we need. We filter for the English uh, label for the books and then we introduce regex. So we use regex, uh, filter regex and then we are looking for a specific string, in this case for the variable book label and then we introduce our regular expression. In this case it's the word mass and at the end we have this dollar sign, this means the string should end with mass and there should nothing should come afterwards. And last but not least we have here also a flag and this flag I means that mass could be written in capital letters or not, we have both options. And then of course we also have the author and the author label and we also filter the author label for English language labels. And of course, as we already said, we want to order the results by date. Let's see what that looks like in the query. And this should be done in a second. And here we are. And you see that all of these book labels now contain the word mass. Um, in this case, it's written in capital with a capital M and all book titles then also end with Mars, which Sometimes is very nice. Sometimes it also starts with Mars and ends with Mars. That's fine, but yes. our regular expression allows that, so that's Perfect. perfectly fine. All right, let's continue. Okay, so let's see what we can do with the query and make it a bit more complex. So in the next example, what we want to do, we want to look for book titles that end with the word Mars. We know that already. And that optionally have an image because we saw that fancy titles and we are a bit yeah, curious how these books might look like. And of course, Wikidata might provide an image. So what we have to do here is, of course, we connect the former query that we had with an image. And since we, we know that not every book might have an image, of course we want to have all of the results and for those where an image is available, we want to have it. So that's an optional thing. So how to encode this in the query? Let's have a look. That's quite easy. So it's exactly the same query like before and we add an additional line and this is here the optional constraint. And for that we have the keyword optional. So that's a keyword in Sparkle and then it follows in uh, curly brackets um, exactly the graph pattern that we want to ask. So we want to ask that the book has property 18 is the image property, a specific image. And of course we should not forget also to include the image here in the query results because otherwise we can't see it. So we also have here a date that we want to have as a publication date of the book and all of the list that we see is also ordered by date. So let's see what happens when we do this query. All of the results have to be ordered. Sometimes it takes a while. And you see here the first one talking about Mars is already from 1826. So that's a French author, Alfred de Vigny. And then we have uh, the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs. Two we are made of Mars, I haven't read it, but probably you know Edgar Rice Burroughs. He's also uh, the author of Tarzan, so you might have heard about that guy. Okay, and now you see that it's the most important thing. For some of them we have image there, and for others we don't have the image there. If we now wouldn't have included the keyword optional, this line would be completely missing in the result because it doesn't have an image. So the graph pattern would not have been fulfilled. But via using optional, it's still there and we can see that there is another thing which is also Edgar Rice Burroughs, Synthetic Men of Mars, so exciting and it's from 1940 but without a picture. Yeah, you might ask yourself now, ha, 
it would be nice to see the pictures, wouldn't it? So what we can do here is, I show it directly here in the query, we can here change the query. So I up, go up here and what I can do here is I can provide a so-called visualization option. I do this by entering here uh, a hash sign and then you see several visualization options and we select here the option timeline because then we would have a timeline and would probably then also see all of the images. Okay, let's do the query again. And it takes a while. And we see, yay. So this is exciting. We see here, uh, whoops, Edgar Rice Burroughs. So let me scroll down. It doesn't want to scroll down. Ah, now we see it. So here, that's uh, John Carter of Mars. So typical Edgar Rice, Edgar Rice Burroughs. So that's quite nice. So you can play around with it, see lots of images. This is then, of course, what we can do with the optional keyword and of course then with the different visualizations we have at hand. So here you see it again at Wikidata. Okay, let's proceed. Yes. So previously we have learned that usually Sparkle query patterns are conjunctive. That means um, they are connected via a logical end. But we also have the possibility to make them disjunctive. For example, we can say in uh, Wikidata, which books are dealing with time travel or have Mars as their narrative location. And this, um, this is what it can look like. Again, we have some kind of book here with the main subject time travel, or we can also have books with the narrative location Mars. And in the query, it looks exactly like this, so we have here both patterns. Um, on the one hand, we have the book and the main subject time travel. We have the book and the narrative location. They are both in parentheses. And in between, we have the union keyword. And this allows us to do really this logical disjunction. And when we take a look at the query. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we can also see here. We have the union and let's take a look at the result. And this is quite obvious and nice. So here we have, for example, the time hoppers, which deals with time travel, probably. And then we also have something that contains Mars, for example, a fighting man of Mars. So in this query result, we have both options, the time travel and the Mars topic. All right. Do you think there are novels that contain both time travel and Mars? Should we try out on the flight? <laughs> we can. Okay. All right. So for this, I would simply remove the union keyword. We remove the parentheses because we don't, because now both patterns um, should we met here and we don't have results. Unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> so if you know a novel that contains time travel and is uh, taking place on Mars, don't forget to put it in Wikidata. All right. And now we continue. Okay. We also have the possibility to ask for things which not exist. Like you saw here, we could have asked for the not existence of books in Wikidata. Uh, having time travel and Mars as a subject. But let's see how this example works. Which books have Mars as their narrative location and are not science fiction novels? That would be interesting to see. So we look at the query again. We have the books. We are looking for the author because we want to know it. And we have to look for the genre. So that is quite important for us. And uh, of course, we look at all the rest that we have. It should be a literary novel. However, it should not have the genre science fiction novel. So this is a specific genre. As you see, it has a large number. This is a science fiction novel that should not be fulfilled. How do we do that in the query? So just have a look. There we have something new. We have here a filter for existence. And here is for not existence. So we filter for not exists. And then we give a graph pattern again that should not occur 
in our results. And the triple that is filtered out that should not occur is book. And then we have here the genre. And here we have uh, the science fiction novel. Okay, so it's exactly the query like we know it. But of course, we want to filter out now science fiction novels. Okay, let's have a look. What happens there? Okay, so four books are given here. Interestingly, at least Robert uh, Heinlein and Larry Niven, they are science fiction authors, but they seem to have written something which, oh, this is science fiction, but it's not science fiction novel. So one feature here of uh, the editor is, for example, when you hover over one of these um, WDQ numbers, it tells you also what it is, because this makes living quite easier. Otherwise, you would have to keep all of these numbers in mind. So you hover over it and you see, OK, this is science fiction novel. But of course, the genre can be science fiction there. It's not science fiction novel. Hmm. Yeah. But the others here, we have one horror literature, and the other one is speculative fantastic fiction novel. That's quite similar. So everything dealing with Mars seems to be connected to science fiction. OK, let's go back. So, this is not the only way how you can filter out or negate things. So, there is also, besides the filter not exist possibility, the keyword minus or not bound. We have heard about the unary operator bound, so this here. And this means if there is a result, so if the variable that comes after bound really has a result. And if we ask for not bound, then we ask for a variable not having a result, which is the same like we ask for a negation of that. So there are several variants to do exactly the same thing here, and you can use whichever you would like. OK, so far so good. In the next lecture, you will see uh, many more complex queries with Sparkle.